Hey, what's up, guys? How y'all doing? This is Seaball Yousaf, aka Chris, checking in for another video commentary. So for today's video, I thought I would talk about the snipers that are gonna be in the upcoming Black Ops 2, and just give my thoughts and what I think will happen with all of them from what I've seen from Gamescom, and then also some clips from commentators who have gotten early access to the game. So, the first thing I wanted to say was all the different, four different sniper rifles that are in Black Ops 2. And the first one I wanted to talk about is the Ballista. And for those of you who don't know, this is a bolt action sniper rifle. And it has pretty high damage. It's not quite the highest, it's the second highest in the sniper class for Black Ops 2. But it's still pretty powerful. And this gun looks like it's going to be pretty fun. It looks like it could be the MSR of this game and look for that one to be one of the most popular snipers and the next gun is the SCU AS and this one's a semi-automatic sniper rifle but it has very low power and it looks as if it has pretty high recoil and because of these two things it looks like it's going to be very much so outmatched by all the other sniper rifles in the game so look for this to be the Dragonoff-esque gun Black Ops 2 that not many people use when they're trying to get good games, but they only use when they're trying to have fun and just <laughs> be able to say, hey, I did good with this piece of crap gun. And the next gun is the DSR-50, and from everything I've seen, this one looks like it could be the best tryhard sniper in the game. And it, just like the Ballista, it is a very high powered bolt action sniper rifle however it is a little bit more powerful than, than the ballista. The ballista looked like it probably has the same damage profile as the MSR or L118 from Modern Warfare 3 where the chest, Security neck, and head will give you one shot but everything else will take two shots whereas the DSR-50 looks like anything other than the limbs will give you one shot so look for that one to be really powerful and the last sniper rifle is the XPR-50, and this one's a semi-automatic medium damage sniper rifle. And to me it almost kind of looks like a RSAS type sniper rifle, where um, you every once in a while will get a one hit kill, but mainly you're going to be using it kind of like an assault rifle, where you just kind of spam the trigger and plan on getting a two hit kill most of the time that you use it. And I think they could have put in an additional sniper or two into this game just to give a little bit more variety and give you something new to use every once in a while. But overall, I'm pretty happy with the selection that they have. Even though there's only four, I think they did a pretty good job of making most of the sniper rifles pretty unique and have their own set of characteristics. So I, I'm pretty glad about that. And the next thing I want to talk about with the attachments that are going to be available with the sniper rifles in Black Ops 2. And the first one is the ACOG, and for those of you who have been playing COD for a while, it's the same old ACOG that we've seen in the last two or three uh, Call of Duties. It looks like it'll be good for those who are wanting to play an aggressive or quick scoping sniper style, but for those who want to use sniper traditionally, not going to be too useful. The next one is the variable zoom, and I'm hoping it's kind of like the one in Black Ops. I don't, I don't really know why, but for some reason I thought the black, the variable zoom scope was a lot more useful in Black Ops than Modern Warfare 3. I think it might have been the map uh, layout. I think Black Ops there was a lot more maps where it was useful to have a scope that you could change how much it was zoomed in, whereas Modern Warfare 3, not so much. And the next attachment is the dual band scope and it is the Black Ops 2 equivalent of the thermal scope. And I'm kind of interested to see if it's actually going to be useful because I haven't seen any gameplay with this yet. And I kind of want to see if it'll be like the Modern Warfare 3 thermal scope where it kind of lowers the definition of everything else in the scope but you can still see what's going on or if it's going to be like Black Ops where the only thing you can see is the person who's uh, glowing hot. Because if it's like that where it was in Black Ops, where all you can see is the person glowing, and it's not going to be very useful because if they're using Ghost, you're not going to be able to see um, them at all, and it just helps a lot if you can see what's in the background when you're trying to use the thermal scope. And the next attachment is the Ballistic CPU, and this is a brand new attachment to the COD series. It's not a unique idea, 
but it's new as being an attachment and what it does is it reduces your sway while you're aiming down sight so it'll be interesting to see how much it actually reduces the sway if it's pretty much like holding your breath or if it just cuts it in half I don't know but that could be a very useful attachment for those who are trying to do long range sniping or who are hard scopers and the next one is the suppressor and nothing new here it's just the same old suppressor we've seen in every Call of Duty since COD 4 and it probably won't be too helpful on the DSR 50 or the Ballista two bolt actions but it could be very useful on the XPR 50 where you're kinda having a very low recoil planning on getting two shot kills most of the time anyways so we'll see with that one and the next attachment is the extended clip again nothing new here to anyone who's played COD before it just adds more uh, bullets to your magazine next attachment is FMJ which for those of you who've been playing the series for a while will recognize it just increases your bullets um, ability to penetrate through walls and stuff like that so should be pretty useful on the two high-powered sniper rifles and not so much on the other two because you're not really going to be trying to shoot through walls anyways look at this knife thing fail off right there <laughs> that was pretty sad and so yeah and then the next attachment is the laser sight and this again kind of like the uh, ballistic CPU is something that is a old idea to the series but we've never seen it as an attachment before and what it does is it just tightens your hip fire spread so it's pretty much like steady aim for um, all the other Call of Duties up to this point and it looks like it'll be a very helpful attachment for snipers who are trying to quick scope or again play an aggressive role where you might need to hip fire some people sometimes and the very last attachment available for snipers except for this one's only available for one sniper is the iron sights and this one can only be used on the ballista and it's it looks like it's gonna be pretty dang fun to play around with it just um, replaces the scope with just the plain old iron sights which for those of you who played world at war know that that can be actually pretty dang fun to use on a bolt action and so yeah we'll see how popular that one is and it actually is relatively useful too if you're trying to do closer range sniping because it's obviously a lot easier to shoot somebody at close range when you're looking through iron sights rather than looking through a freaking sniper scope so yeah I those are all the attachments that are gonna be in Black Ops 2 available for snipers and overall I'm pretty dang excited to use the snipers in Black Ops 2 it looks like they're trying to get a good balance between Modern Warfare 3 where the snipers were really easy to use and black ops where the snipers could be used effectively but it definitely took a little bit more skill so i'm excited for that and let me know down below in the comment section what you guys think on the black ops 2 snipers and if you guys are excited until next time see you guys later